That is quite a journey from the southeastern tip of the Korean peninsula to the heart of Danish shipping there in Copenhagen. And this is a fascinating one that could be very uh, monumental in terms of the shift towards green emissions for the industry. Exactly, Karen. It is a big moment, not just for Maersk, but indeed for the overall shipping industry. But I want to give you some details about this big vessel that, as we said, is indeed making history today. It is 172 meters long. Its widest point is 32 meters. It includes things such as a gym, a recreational room, but of course, it's the engine that makes this vessel so special. Why? Because on the one hand, it can be you run with the normal fuel but on the other hand it can run with green methanol which is an alternative fuel and practically speaking it just means that this container ship can emit 100 tons of co2 less per day than a traditional container ship and of course this is just the first practical step really for Maersk in the target to achieve to achieve carbon neutrality by 2040 here's the CEO explaining what the the unveiling of this ship means for Maersk and the industry. This is a real symbolic day. Uh, it's a big symbol, actually, but it's a, it's a really symbolic day of our energy transition really becoming a reality, something concrete that we can actually demonstrate, not just commitments and, and hard work, but actually something that everybody can see. This is the first, the first step for us, but it's the first step for the industry as well. The ship was ordered only in 2021, and she was really the first of its kind. Today, just a couple of years later, we have 125 ships that have been ordered ordered by different companies uh, to, uh, to actually work on the same technology and the same energy transition. So this ship is really a trendsetter for a whole industry. And when I've been uh, speaking to some analysts about what this announcement represents, they've gone as far as saying that this is revolutionary for Maersk and to the industry as well. But they did highlight that they are concerned about the supply of green methanol. What are you doing to address these concerns in the market? I think one of the real fundamental uh, points in which this ship uh, uh, really makes the point is how much you need to mobilize a broad ecosystem in order to be able to pull the energy transition. When we ordered the ship, the real question was the engineering behind the engine, the propulsion, and how the ship was going to work. As soon as we had this in place, the next problem is actually to have the availability of the fuel at a price that is still competitive for us, for us to use. And this has been actually the main, uh, the main headache for, for a while. And it continues to be, as we need to scale this up and we need to grow the supply of this ship, it continues to be one of the key focus area that we need to have uh, today. I would say that we're seeing a, a, a big mobilization, but some of these projects that takes actually place uh, and takes actually time to come into place. And this is something that we will need to continue to work on for, for, for quite a few years because it does, it, it, these are long decisions. These are also decisions that take a long time to implement. So can you guarantee to the markets that uh, the plan for this vessel and the ones that you've ordered for next year, they will be using green methanol and not the second engine that uh, these vessels have? The plan for us has always been that, uh, and that's how we've made also our commitment towards 2030 and 2040, that as these new ships phase in, they will be able to run on, uh, on green methanol. It is not like every supply is signed up all the way up to 2030 in the quantity that we are looking for, but I think that we are more confident today than we were a year ago and we'll continue to work at this to ensure that it is indeed the case. So green methanol is costly, but also scarce. And so in this context, it'll be important to monitor really the supply of this fuel, not just for Maersk, but for the other shipping companies that are looking to use more of green methanol. Hi, I'm Giovanna Bersecci, and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.